Hello, Westford. My name is John Flanagan, and I work at Red Hat. And what we're going to do today is introduce you to a new business in town. And I have here with me Nandu Valal from the Creation Station. Welcome. Thank, thank you, John. Um, so, um, you know, I'm one of the co-founders of Creation Station, and uh, I co-founded with uh, Chris Nichols, who was my partner. Um, so, the idea of Creation Station was, um, you know, this, the the STEAM aspect of, uh, in terms of the education of the kids. Um, now, STEAM. You want to yeah, tell us so, what that means? Um, STEAM is essentially like, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, it's 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 one of those, you know, kind of like jargons, but then like, you know, STEAM is essentially like, you know, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the vision was to uh, educate the community about the different aspects of uh, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So, um, <clears throat> the way we got started was like, um, you know, uh, Chris Nichols founded the first Lego League team um, in his uh, basement almost 10 years back and I joined him uh, almost five years back when uh, you know my son was in uh, fourth grade and uh, you know uh, as part of the first Lego League robotics team and um, when my son's team you know won the Massachusetts State Championship a couple of years back uh, we as part of the team got to go to uh, the World Festival what the first holds um, uh, in St. Louis and uh, when we visited, uh, you know, we looked at all the different programs first had, and you know, we were kind of like amazed to look at, uh, you know, what kind of like, um, you know, like it's it wasn't just robotics, but then like you know, for high school kids, it was an uh, engineering endeavor, and right. they they got to know like you know a lot of uh, technology and engineering aspects hands on, and it it's it was a phenomenal experience, and coming back from that was uh, what we got was like hey, you know, what can we do uh, better uh, in our community uh, with that aspect, so. And we hear FIRST a lot. We hear the, the, the acronym FIRST. And, yeah, so. And we're blessed to have this national, national organization in our backyard, basically, out of Manchester, New Hampshire. And you want to tell us more about what FIRST is? Sure. Um, so, so FIRST uh, is essentially a, a program that was started by, uh, you know, Dean Kamen and Dr. Woody Flowers. It's, it's, it's a phenomenal program for our kids today. Uh, first stands for for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. Uh, they, I mean, the the vision they had was to, uh, you know, almost kind of like uh, give our kids uh, something similar to what you have in sports, but with robotics. And you know, starting at a young age, uh, you know, all the way from kindergarten, you kind of like engage kids hands on. Um, you know, kids really don't realize that uh, it's their learning, but it's like more of a playing aspect for the kids. Right, right. So, and I think it's it's a great program. Uh, you know, they have like for kids uh, starting from kindergarten, like the junior Lego league. Uh, we have the first Lego league for uh, kids from third grade to eighth grade. Uh, we have the first tech challenge, uh, which is like, uh, you know, seventh grade on. And also like the first robotic competition, uh, which was the team we started when m uh, my son went into high school in Westford. Uh, you know, which is like hands-on building like a 120-pound robot, and uh, you know, uh, I think it's 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 a great experience for the kids. Uh, you know, we have a lot of great mentors uh, who kind of like work with the kids. Uh, you know, kind of like one-on-one, uh, -on -one, like you know, electronics, mechanical, programming. Uh, you know, they work. Uh, you know, most of the weekends, and it's 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 a great uh, you know endeavor for and kids. And you've got quite a facility over there to to house a lot of the. You know the the space for the robots and the creation space, the ID, the ideation space as we call it, where you have whiteboards where you can go and yeah, uh, so, so design these robots, right? Yeah, so so the, so the idea was like uh, you know we wanted to have a space where you know you have um, uh, like an open space where you know kids can uh, build the robot hands on, like a, almost like a work workshop space, and um, we have space where uh, kids can um, you know. Uh, attend like a brainstorming session as a group. Uh, typically, like you know, uh, in our high school robotics team, we have like around like you know, for 50 kids now, uh, and then like you know, when they all come in together and try to you know brainstorm on like you know how they want to design their robot to solve specific challenges, um, it can be chaotic. So, and I think you know, so it it is a it is a great space uh, for kids to uh, you know be there, and it's, and also we have like a lab space where they can work on you know as part of the electronic stuff, so they can work in the lab. So, and again, we keep referring to it as a maker space as well. You want to explain a little bit about what that is, and actually we have um, one of those devices here running right now. 
Yeah, I mean, we have, we have a three D printer running. So, 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 I mean, the the idea behind the makerspace was like, um, uh, this is something uh, I had done, uh, you know, a long time ago, uh, way back in ninety six, ninety seven. Uh, as part of my, uh, you know, work, I used to work at Indian Institute of Science, and uh, you know, uh, I worked for professors, uh, you know, uh, Udupi Srinivasa and uh, Guru Murthy, who were working on a. Uh, uh, you know what back then was called as rapid prototyping, right. and uh, the idea was to uh, create, uh, like for example, like a mold for an automotive component uh, using sheets of metal, uh, similar to how, how I have here. So you know sheets are cut uh, to represent the three-dimensional object and uh, stacked as slices, and uh, you know you would you would get a uh, a, a mold, uh, you know, somewhat like this. And you know you could take a uh, you know use a resin and get a part out of that. So that's how I was uh, introduced to what was called back then as rapid prototyping, which has morphed into uh, like a three D printer of modern day. So again, this is a you know you will want to make a, a prototype of an object. So exactly. you would build up the mold, pour the melting plastic in, and out you would get. Exactly. So like yeah. So. So yeah, so you would pour the resin in, and you so uh, you would get the part out of, and you could take you could make multiple prototypes. That was the objective of doing a mold as opposed to doing an actual part itself. Uh, but now the three D printers can actually make these parts. Uh, you know, uh, so that's that's so so the idea behind the makerspace was to uh, in the community you you create a space where uh, you know kids and adults. Can come in and you know share the knowledge. They get access to they, technology, basically. Access to technology, exactly. So, so you know, when we looked around, there was nothing uh, you know nearby, and you know we felt like it's it's more like a a a, a technical or you know an engineering playground uh, to say where they can come and experiment with things, and um, you know there's nobody telling them not to you know break stuff or not to experiment with stuff. So you, you know, I mean, you know, you have seen that you know we have. Uh, you know, uh, what we call as a destruction zone where, you know, kids can take things apart and see what's inside a computer uh, or what's inside a laptop. So, so it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's kind of like a uh, playground for kids to uh, yeah. learn on technology and, and engineering. I mean, I can't think of a better way to get your hands on something that you've created, be able to, you know, the act of holding it, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, any of these objects, right? Just yeah. To say, I designed this. And then it, it, I printed it basically, and here it is. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, so so this uh, you know this uh, this goes back to uh, you know the idea of like you know how uh, you know kids and adults construct an idea in their mind of like you know what they want something to look like. Now you you transfer that idea into a software. So you you design you 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 uh, you know design like a three D model in a software. And once you design the three D model in a software, now then you can send it off to a printer that can print it out, and it has your personal footprint or it has your your personal touch to it. And uh, you know it, it's it's a fabulous thing. Uh, you know this is where it comes. Uh, you know where uh, science, technology, engineering, and art uh, and math are all kind of like you know coming together. And it's it's a phenomenal experience for our uh, kids today to to uh, get started in this. So. So what kind of programs do you offer at Creative Station, Station where kids can actually experience experience this? so so yeah so so we have we have uh, you know what we call as a um, uh, open play uh, in the sense you know we do like you know drop ins and drop offs now drop ins are for younger kids where you know we expect the parent to stay with the kid and drop offs is for bigger kids where you know a, a parent thinks that you know they can drop them off and go do a show and come back uh, and then you know we also do birthday parties so where kids get to um, experience some of the, the technology and engineering, uh, you know, uh, I would say toys that we have, uh, or a period of like 90 minutes or so, and then um, uh, it's it's basically a uh, kind of like a like a party atmosphere. So uh, with the technology, uh, you know, uh, setting and. For kids, it's really that they're playing with like a high-tech toy. So it's Absolutely. it's for them, it's it's more of like a playing with a toy. So that's that's how they perceive it. So. And uh, we have classes and workshops. So, so we have classes for kids uh, starting from kindergarten. So we teach uh, something called as like uh, you know um, the Lego we do, which is uh, for younger kids uh, starting from uh, you know uh, kindergarten and grade two. And um, so we also have um, uh, Lego robots. So which is like uh, the Mindstorms uh, EV3 kits. So, so these are for kids uh, you know third grade and above. 
And um, so this is a great platform, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's such a, a phenomenal platform, the Mindstorms is like, um, you know, that's, where, that's what the first LEGO League robotics runs off of. And, you know, we teach classes, uh, you know, we teach like a beginner, uh, intermediate and advanced level classes uh, for uh, kids who are ready to, uh, you know, uh, jump into things. And um, we also, um, you know, do workshops. We do workshops uh, in, um, you know, we do uh, workshops for kids as well as adults. So we do workshops in uh, laser cutting, so where you can uh, you know cut acrylic, and uh, this was one of the uh, you know ornaments that some of the kids and adults made as uh, part of like a Christmas hackathon. So so we are hosting like a hackathon. Yeah, and we talked about earlier about the the 3D printer, which would print the base that you see there. Yeah. But so tell us a little bit more about the the yeah. laser cutter because that's a, another interesting <laughs> device you have there. Yes. So uh, the 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 interesting thing about this workshop was it was more of a digital fabrication in the sense like you know it, it encompasses like um, uh, laser cutting it encompasses like uh, you know 3D design and it also has so electronics in there too. Uh, uh, electronics in there where you do some soldering as well and um, you know uh, and um, so so laser cutting is like you know laser cutter is an uh, is a it's it's slightly an expensive piece of equipment which not everybody can get access on but then like you know it can cut uh, acrylic wood uh, you know fiberboard um, so it can uh, even uh, cut uh, paper and, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, art. So one of the things, uh, you know, I helped my son do was uh, an, uh, you know, an obelisk. Uh, this is a replica of the one in France. And, you know, this was 3D printed. And uh, the hieroglyphs were kind of like, um, you know, laser cut, um, you know, using, um, you know, uh, using a laser cutter, so you can laser cut even paper. So you're cutting the stencils out. Basically, you are cutting like the that, stencils yeah. out there. So, so you can imagine, you know, the the, the power of that. So, so essentially, like, um, you know, it's it's a digital fabrication. So the reason it's a digital fabrication is like, you, know, you have an idea, you conceive it, and you, um, you know, you design using the software tools. So you're designing most of it using a computer, and you know, the rest of it is like, yes. So there is some, uh, you know. Uh, tasks like you know you had to prep the equipment, you had to uh, you know set up the equipment and things like that. So other than that, it's the equipment which is like you know taking the information uh, uh, of the you know uh, the data based on what you have designed right. and interpreting it and you know uh, creating. This these is real life. I mean, this is real. This is how technology companies do their prototyping. This is how we, we do the stuff at Red Hat as well. I mean, you design, <laughs> you use the software. To, to get your design in place, and you create a prototype. And in this case, it's a physical prototype. It's exactly it so. Use manufacturing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So th this, uh, you know, th this this whole thing uh, is all about like you know preparing our kids for the future. So which is like you know you 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 get an idea, you build a product, and then like you know so nothing works the first time, right? So so that's where you know a, a lot of our workshops, our classes go through like the engineering design process because like you know. Uh, nothing is uh, straightforward the first time, but you know, as and when you build things, you realize what things are working, what things are not working, and uh, you know, you want to improve upon it. And you know, it's a continuous improvement process, and you know, you keep uh, working on it, and you make a better product uh, every time. And uh, you know, it's 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 a process. So, yeah. Now, uh, coming back to uh, you know some of the things that uh, you know we we do like you know uh, classes and workshops. So you know, I saw the workshops. Uh, we do classes. We do classes, uh, you know, uh, also in uh, um, like electronics, like basic electronics, like soldering and desoldering. And you know, we do workshops specifically in laser cutting. Um, uh, we also do uh, classes in Minecraft uh, gaming. So, so that and is that's uh, big with the, the kids right now. That's exactly. A, that's so the, that's that's yeah. big. And we wanted uh, the the idea is like you know the kids who are uh, you know. Um, uh, who are excited to play Minecraft, so we want to take them to the next level where they can uh, do programming using Minecraft, uh, what is called as Minecraft modding, and and I think it's 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 a great platform because like uh, kids feel like you know they have built something in Minecraft with their own you know uh, with their ideas, right. and that's it's uh, it's it's phenomenal experience for the kids. And in some of the camps, they can actually do these games against someone that's in the room too. Usually, they're playing these games. They're who knows who they're playing at? They're yes, it's a virtual. But here you've got people who are able to interact. Yes, um, in your facility there, which is kind yeah. Of fun. So th that's that's another thing. So uh, you know uh, we have um, you know it's, it's it's a multiplayer mode, and you know when kids design and build something, they can share with others. So that's another thing. So which is which is a great experience for the kids. So um, so and then uh, you know we um, 
uh, also teach uh, you know cl classes in uh, 3D printing itself. So we do uh, you know classes so where kids can come in. We teach uh, you know the online software called Tinkercad where they design and you know we have like uh, three different printers where uh, in our facility so where they can build out of uh, you know 3D printers and uh, they get to uh, experiment some of the models that they designed yeah. and uh, take it back with and them. And that's something you know not everyone has a 3D printer at home yet. <laughs> You know, I would imagine in the future we're going to start seeing those, much like we all have our inject, inkjet <laughs> printers and, and laser printers. It's Someday we may have one of these devices in our homes. So, uh, uh, yeah, so we, ha uh, we have a prototype, or we have uh, one of the uh, 3D printers that can be at home. So, but I think, I think what is uh, kind of like, uh, you know, would be more empowering is like, you know, uh, you know, uh, for our uh, teachers and our schools uh, to embrace uh, 3D printing, and you know that's something that uh, you know we are working on. Uh, our uh, mission is to like you know uh, uh, engage the teachers and educate them, uh, and uh, you know the teaching community, uh, especially starting at an elementary school level. Uh, you know, work with the teachers and then like you know engage them. You know, have workshops. Uh, you know, in 3D designing and uh, 3D printing. Uh, give them an understanding and you know something that they can take home something that they can work with the kids so that's that's kind of like you know is uh, our mission so that like you know at some point we will uh, hopefully see some 3d printers uh, in the classrooms not just one for a school and uh, yes at some point it's going to be in the houses but uh, I think before that we want the classrooms to embrace it uh, what what we see more and more is like uh, although like you know we, we 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 always think of any new technology that comes in is uh, something like uh, hey it's technology it's engineering it's science uh, it's math so we don't look at the 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 different aspects of like uh, you know uh, even in arts how it can add value and yeah. I think I think you know three D printer is going to be a real game changer in how you know information is going to be interpreted. Uh, simply because you know 3D printing can be used in any class. It can be used in like this was done for my son's language arts class. So to to right. uh, interpret, uh, you know, uh, so you can think about that and uh, perhaps so biology class. Biology yep. class. So I mean, one of the things you know, off late, you know, we see is like so a um, lot of like museums, like you know, in uh, like the Smithsonian and the Oxford. So they are putting their models of uh, uh, you know fossils, uh, 3D oh, so models. So I could be studying. A fossil and print one out. Exactly. And yeah. Hold it in my hand right there in the classroom. You can exactly. So you can hold the real life replica of the fossil. So because it, it's it's really empowering because like you know now imagine all the institutions across the world. So if they can you know have like just that's just for the fossil, right? So now um, if you think about um, you know like uh, archaeology, so there is a lot of studies being done there, and you know people are creating. Uh, as and when you know they they dig up and they find new things, they are putting the three D models uh, of the uh, things that they're finding out, and you know they can hold in their hand. They can you turn can, it right there, and exactly as if you can they were yes right so on site. You have a replica of uh, you know what somebody had built thousands of years ago. So uh, you know it's it's and uh, or even something like this from the <laughs> so yeah. So this is uh, you know the, the Eiffel the, Tower, right? The Eiffel Tower, and it's like uh, you know it's it's. Um, uh, it took uh, a few days. Uh, I can imagine to, this one takes a little bit while, a little while to print. A little while to print, but then, like uh, you know, it, it came out really nice, and uh, you know, um, so yeah. And while we've been talking over the last twenty minutes or so, we've actually had an item printing on the three D printer. Yes. Uh, which folks will probably get a chance to see that um, at home. We'll, we'll, we have a way to run that back, but. Uh, yeah, Nandu's holding. So, this is what's being. So, so th this is what is a larger being, version of it. Uh, yeah. So uh, probably uh, this is the larger version, and the one that's getting printed is a smaller version of that. So uh, you know, we were uh, talking about this. This is like a uh, Rapunzel's castle because it has like uh, the amount of fine detail that's inside. You know, we can't even show in the cameras, but then like. Yeah. Um, so it's it's great. It's it's phenomenal. You know how it could print. Uh, you know the level of detail. Uh, it has like a staircase inside. I don't know if you can see this at <laughs> home, but you can actually see the staircase. You can see that, but the staircase actually inside this printed object. That's pretty cool. I mean, one of the first times I ever saw uh, a 3D printer at, at work was, um, there was one on a YouTube video, someone actually printed a flute on the 3D printer. Yeah, and it's like a whistle kind of thing, and, and when they were done, took it off the printer. They popped a little ball that because that you know was printed with the extrusion in there, and they yeah. just started playing it. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty amazing stuff. And uh, that was probably six, seven, eight years ago. And I'm sure these things are going to get a lot, a lot fancier. But you know, like you talked about before, this came from the rapid prototyping. You exactly. know, companies that wanted to be able to make make yeah, something it, and see, hey, is this. Is yeah, this because, the part we need? Is this how it's going to turn out? Yeah, so because like, you know, back in those days, uh, you know, it would take like uh, at least a few months to build a prototype. So, uh, you know, that's how the rapid prototyping was born. And, um, you know, once you realized, you know, okay, so rapid prototyping is fine, but I think, you know, uh, 20 years after that, now you see like, you know, now you can really make, uh, you know, uh, really functional parts out of these 3D printers. And I think it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, especially it's going to be, um, uh, I would say like, um, you know, game changer, but uh, it's going to help the kids understand a lot of concepts uh, in terms of, and you know, you never know what kind of stuff, you know, kids can imagine. Now, you know, we always talk about stuff that's, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's hard to make something like this in a traditional manufacturing process. But uh, if you if you look at uh, this, you know, a, a ball inside a cube. So now this was you know built layer upon layer by a 3D printer. So now we can imagine. So you know, as and when you know kids get engaged in this kind of studies and you know understand. So when they have to design some complex things, so you know th they will start uh, you know building stuff. Yeah, so and it shows it can be done, and it's and it, and again, you know come into Creation Station, the kids will have access to the software that's used to put this model together. Yes. Right? Which so, is really cool. Imagine, you know, the kids at home, you want to do this, you can go to Creation Station and true, yeah. so, kick the tires on this, basically. Yeah, so I mean, the, you know, the other, um, you know, great thing is like, a um, lot of, uh, you know, the software nowadays is uh, online, so it's all like cloud-based. Uh, you know, so that's something which you guys are <laughs> yeah, well, well aware of, and I think uh, you know, especially like uh, you know, with uh, the three D design, you know, how kids can uh, perceive the idea and then like you know, design online, so they can design online. They can go at home and do it. At you home. can, yeah, yeah the exactly. Software is so available to them. Software is available to them, and then like you know, and you know, for a nominal fee or you know, for for a for a decent price, we could three D print, and you know, they could collect it in a day or two. Now, there are, you know, like a bureau services which offer, you know, they're going to ship it over, uh, you know, uh, to you. But um, what we can offer is like, you know, if something didn't work out well, you know, in the print, so that's where we can assist them and then say like, you know, wh what is the problem with your design and how we can fix yeah, it. Yeah, and they can learn the limitations and... The, exactly, and, so, and so, so they can learn the limitations and, uh, you know, we can also kind of like give them the advice in terms of like, you know, uh, what are the challenges, uh, you know, uh, in terms of like, you know, what were the problems that they faced and, you know, how to overcome those kind of problems and, uh, you know, with our expertise and, uh, you know, what we have learned over a few years. So it's that's a what great we story. Can, it's a great yeah. story. So, um, wrapping up, where can we find you? You know, uh, if I, I'm a parent of a child, I want to get my kid involved in this. You know, how do we find you? What, uh, what's the next step? There? Yeah, so, so uh, our information is going to be, uh, you know, uh, on, the, on the slide. So, um, so we are, uh, you know, in uh, One Park Drive, uh, off of Route 110, Suite yeah. 9, uh, in Westford, um, and uh, you know, you can reach us uh, online at uh, www.creationstationma.com. And uh, you know, I think uh, this is just the beginning. So we feel like you know, this is just a start, and uh, you know, we have a lot more things, uh, you know, to uh, what we anticipate. You know, how things are going to progress over, uh, you know, the next uh, few years. It's so awesome. It's awesome. And again, this this is a good chance for the kids to learn the future of what they'll be involved in if they choose to go into engineering or any study. Right? We, we mentioned biology. And, yeah, it's, and it, it could be, be anything. It, stuff, it so could be good, it could be access. like uh, it could be archaeology or it could be anything. Any any subject you think about. So there is going to be a, a model or there is going to be something that, uh, you know, is going to come out of this 3D printing. And, uh, you know, the, the day by day, you know, the technology is changing so fast. And uh, it's also the, the intersection of uh, all these different aspects of, like, you know, computing, the hardware, the software, you know, a lot of you know, the, the, the cloud, you know, right? So, I mean, with all this, uh, you know, what is happening is, like, you know, the cost is coming down drastically, and that is what is the most significant thing. So all of a sudden now you have technology accessible, which wasn't uh, a few years earlier, uh, you know, to a to a common man. And I think you know that's that's a, it's it's a great empowering thing that you know even you know uh, you know kids in uh, you know uh, like they can a, access. In fact, they, they can, can actually access, yeah. start doing this. So yeah. 
Well, it's been great, Nandu. Yeah. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to tell us about Creation Station. And, you know, I urge you to go to the website and learn more about it and just knock on the door, go see them and say, hey, we saw this on Westford Cat. Want to learn more? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome anytime. All yeah. right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Yeah. My name is Rich Thal and I'm with uh, Creation Station and we thought we would give you a little uh, brief introduction to 3D printers uh, and um, what we're doing at Creation Station with them. So uh, here we have uh, what's called an, a Delta Robot kind of uh, printer and they're, it's based on the, the um, notion of a Delta, a, three, a triangle and um, there are robots that are shaped like this, but in this case we don't, instead of having a hand or something that does other kinds of work, we have a uh, extruder. An extruder, as you will see, is sort of like um, a pastry bag where you s squirt out the plastic. But uh, just before we get into that, I want to show you a small uh, M3D printer, and this is what you're likely to have in your house uh, in the not very distant future. Um, so it, it is a small uh, 3D printer. It prints on this surface here. And it costs just under $400. Uh, it's a little bit slow, but if you wait a while, you'll get one that uh, works faster. So this is a roll of what we call filament. And in this case, it's what's called uh, polylactic acid plastic. It's been extruded into a, a filament which is about two millimeters in diameter. Okay. And that filament comes down here, there's a, you can't see it, but there's a, a gear here that uh, pushes the filament out and along and through this tube called a Bowden tube. And that comes down to the uh, extruder or hot end. And um, uh, it push it, there's a heater here, which heats the plastic very rapidly um, to about uh, roughly 200 degrees uh, Celsius. And that melts the plastic. It uh, melts and it is extruded out in a, a, a thread, literally about the size of um, a button thread. You now it's a little heavier than normal sewing thread. And uh, it lays it on the model, which is stuck to the table, the, called the uh, printer bed. And it builds up gradually. In about a second, it uh, hits the model and the, there's a fan here that cools off the plastic as rapidly as we can get it cool. So we build the model in layers. Uh, the layers are about uh, a two, a 200 microns, which is, this, is to say that there's uh, five layers uh, in every millimeter. So you can see it takes, it's a slow process, but it's not being done by a person, so we just have to be patient. And um, as that builds up, we eventually will get the, uh, the full model. And then we'll use a little chisel uh, or knife to remove it from the bed of the printer. And that, that's the whole process. Just as you can now take a book and transmit it across the internet and print it out and have it in front of you, you can now take a tangible object and do the same thing. <laughs> 